Okay, so I got one of these comments. This is the fun thing about being back on YouTube. I got one of these comments that sounded like quite a simple comment. I'm sure the person who left it thought it was a response. They'd made a comment. I'd made a response. They made another response. They probably thought a few lines, you know, interesting discussion. It, it, was, it, was, a, it was a pleasant discussion, just let me say that. No animosity or vitriol there. Uh, but it was one of those ones that, as soon as I read it, I thought, I can't just respond in a couple of lines here. I have too much to say. It, it chimes in with too much that I've thought about the last few years, some of which I've covered on video, which you might not have seen anyway, so it's worth rehashing for people who are interested in these things. Um, but to try and put this all together, really. Um, so what I should probably do is read you the comment. This is from somebody who is non-binary, who is trying to explain to me their perspective quite reasonably as to why they think it's sort of non-binary identities are really important. Or at least to have a non-binary category, which I have less issue with. Of course, in the video that I'm talking about, the issue is more the, the proliferation, as I likened it to having... Uh, foods, drinks, and then 50 varieties of yoghurt, right? We can just have yoghurt, can't we? Or or, or food-like drinks or something, you know? Um, so this is, this is what they said. Uh, does the societal image of man line up with your internal perception of yourself? Does that resonate with you in any way? When people call you a man and use he, him pronouns, does it feel like they see who you are and are talking about you? Do you feel flattered by words like handsome and gentleman? For me, none of that is the case. So, okay, that's really what I wanted to respond to because there was a series of questions. I really have two concerns with regard to this whole issue. Okay, so let me try and frame them and first frame this in terms of the proper concern, which is that I, I'm slightly concerned whilst I see some value in looking at gender incorporating gender identity expression all these things sense of self as something separate from biological self uh, uh, sorry biological sex i am concerned that we go down a path where we end up defining man and woman in such a way that they become really meaningless they don't have any informational content if you tell somebody a man that you're a man it tells them nothing about you anymore it becomes no more than a proper noun. Saying that you're a man tells somebody no more than saying that you're a Bob or a Steve or a Rebecca. Okay. It's just a name. It's a name that you were given. You might feel some attachment to that name, but that really is just as a result of upbringing. You were brought up to be called Rebecca, and so you kind of like being called Rebecca, and it's no more than that. And that's probably a concern that I had, and this person in some ways has batted it back and asked me about other things such as handsome and gentleman. But aren't these just the same thing dressed up in other language? Handsome versus beautiful. Aren't they just words that we use as attractiveness to refer to a, a Steve rather than to refer to a Rebecca? So again, it doesn't seem to have any anything more substance than a set of words, whether it's the pronouns we use, whether it's preferring the term man or woman, uh, or whether it's preferring to be called handsome rather than beautiful, a gentleman rather than a lady. This doesn't seem to be any more than what proper nouns we prefer for ourselves and what pronouns we prefer for ourselves. Surely this is just a game we're playing then, right? And yet I think everybody is invested in this, whether you're gender critical, whether you're a trans person, trans advocate, surely we're all invested in man and woman, meaning a little bit more than that. It doesn't benefit anybody if that's what it all boils down to. It's just another name to call ourselves and a set of preferred words, right? And this is, this I think is my, one of my f fundamental problems here, that we're going down this, this route where there's no informational content. If I say to you that, that I'm a biological male, I think that gives you some informational content. A wonderful, wonderful way of adding to that is to say that I'm a typical biological male, by the way. If I describe myself as a typical biological male, that tells you a whole slew of things about me, 
right? Immediately that tells you a whole slew of things about me in terms of my masculinity, in terms of my body and the, the, the layout of it. It tells you a whole lot of things. I mean, you could say, well, you could then just identify as a typical man. The only problem with that as an identity is it sounds like an insult, doesn't it? If somebody says, well, he's a typical man, that sounds like an insult rather than a statement intended to inform. So I'm not sure I'm really very happy with that. Uh, typical biological male seems much better. But what does it tell you? If masculinity can incorporate anything, if man can, is just somebody who identifies as a man, ultimately and nobody argues with that now do they or, or, or at least there are some people who don't let's let's get that right let's set that right right from the word go people do argue with it of course they do but there are some people it doesn't matter i i could change absolutely nothing about myself except to say i want to start identifying as a woman and as long as for some people as long as they thought that i was genuine with that that i'm not just pranking them that i'm not just having a bit of a joke at their expense or trying to make a point they'll go along with that i don't have to change anything in fact i could change something i could grow a full beard right i could start getting into even more traditionally stereotypically manly pursuits and none of that in their eyes would disqualify me to any degree so man really doesn't mean anything other than the same thing as saying that I'm a Bob or a Steve or a Kevin or a Rebecca or a Shirley. And as I say, the, the, the implication is with this tweet was that by showing some allegiance to certain terms, some preference to some terms, that that that, it, that insinuates something. But, but I don't see that that's any different to a name. I, I can tell you a little anecdote here. My, my middle name, my, my proper name, of course, is James. Many people know that. I'm happy to identify as, as a James or a Jim or a Jimmy. Um, or as a Noel nowadays as a result of doing this. Some people even in real life occasionally call me Noel in, a, in, in, you know, in meat space, as it were. And uh, I, I don't really bat an eyelid to that. But my middle name or one of my middle names is William. And, and my grandfather was, was known as Billy. Uh, and I fancied being a Bill. This is as a kid of about 11 or 12. And I managed to convince my parents and, and um, my friends and some of their parents to start calling me Bill. And they did. And I didn't like it. It didn't feel like me anymore. Right. So I can understand that. It didn't feel like people were talking to me. It, it, was, a, it was quite a nasty experience, actually. I backed away from that quite quickly. So I understand that. But clearly that is baseless, other than just through sort of learnt associations from when I was young. That's pretty much all it is. I was brought up as a James, Jim, Jimmy. I've, I've kind of gradually gone into the Noel thing, but I couldn't suddenly jerk across to a Bill. That didn't work. But clearly being a Bill isn't anything concrete. If I tell you I'm a Bill rather than a Jim, all it tells you is that I share a name with other people who are called Bill. All right? it's, it's useless. It's practically useless. I wouldn't want to identify as a Bill. And I also wouldn't want to feel that I need to keep identifying as a Bill just out of empathy for people who are trans Bills and I don't want to deny them something that I can identify back. Because effectively, that's what, what we can boil down to with gender versus sex. I can say, do you know what? I scrap it all. I'm just going to identify as a typical biological male. But if everybody does that, where does that leave trans people? They, they really can't change their biological sex. And so what can they identify as to identify into a group that they properly, in terms of gender, uh, need to associate with i don't know that's a really difficult question that and i haven't got an easy answer but what i have got in terms of this is when we talk about how we we, we sort of like the way that i identify as a gym because that's what i was called when i was young i think a lot of these things in terms of the words that this person used handsome he him gentleman uh, and the comfort that I feel with them as much as I, as I do, although I've no problem with people calling me beautiful, or to be honest, if somebody called me she, it wouldn't really it wouldn't really bother me. It wouldn't give me a great deal of concern. I don't think it's maybe less of an issue for me 
than it is for some people, certainly less of an issue for me than it would be for some people who are a, a, a very, very typically masculine uh, or people who are trans, who it's a bigger issue for. But I think that the association that I have, I slept walked into. And I think that's a really, really important point to make. It's a point that I've made with regard to sport before, where you see people who say things like, well, it's women's tennis. It's called women's tennis. Trans women are women, therefore trans women should be playing in women's tennis. And that ignores the fact that the term women's tennis, what, we didn't create that term three years ago on Twitter. We created that term decades and decades and decades ago where woman was used just as a synonym for biological female. And so we need to take account of that. What was our understanding of it when we created that term? And I think some, but when somebody says to you, well, you, you use the terms he, him, when you're 50 years old, when you use the terms he, him, you identify as a man. When I was born, folks, right, I, I was biologically male, as I, obviously I still am. I've seen a, a picture of me when I was a baby, right, and you can see my, you can see the, you can see the bollocks, right. It's quite clear. There's no risk of misidentification there. Um... And so, boy was seen as a synonym for uh, juvenile uh, uh, human male. And if you were a boy, you grew up to be a man, which meant adult human male. So I never really give it any thought. I, I doubt there's anybody watching this video who grew up giving it very much thought. It's just accepted. If you're, me, uh, if you're female, you're a girl, then a woman. If you're uh, male, then you're a boy, then a man. So my association with the terms man, you can't read anything into that other than the fact that I was cultured just to accept that that's the term that applies to me because I'm male. You can't now alter the rules and say, nah, it just doesn't work like that. That's not what boy and man mean anymore. Right. And maybe never did. That's the argument that in some that in some scenarios it was always used in a different context ergo that other context trumps everything well I don't think that it does I've said before I'm happy with this tension of using these terms to different definitions as we use lots and lots and lots and lots of other terms uh, to different definitions but I don't think you can look at somebody who formed that sense of identity unquestioningly and say well there you go Right, because it just doesn't work like that. Now I start to look into it and think, well, okay, looking at the term man in this different context, do I identify as a man and do I want to identify as a man? And the only reason that I answer yes is for ease. It's to save me having this 20-minute conversation with every single person that I see. Because I can't see any other reason to do it than that, right? I don't see that it adds any informational content. It brings me back to a discussion that I had maybe six or seven years ago on YouTube over the terms feminist and anti-feminist when these were real big discussions then when some people labelled themselves anti-feminists and some people said that I was an anti-feminist and yet some other people labelled themselves feminist and would label me a feminist. I got both those labels. I rejected both of those labels. Because I, I said both of those labels incorporate such huge amounts of, of ideas and beliefs that they uninform. Right? They mislead as much as they inform. They have very little informational content. After all, if, if an anti-feminist is somebody who's against at least some forms of feminism, then every, every single feminist on this planet is an anti-feminist and the, the difference the bewildering array of things that people put under their heading uh, of self-identifying as a feminist it tells you next to nothing um, you can believe in the equality of the sexes and be an anti-feminist it would seem and yet for some that's the core the only belief that you need to hold to be regarded as a feminist it's all very, very complicated, and so I rejected both of them. I said they, they, they mislead more than they inform, and I'm kind of heading the same way here. I'm not sure that the term man misleads more than it, it informs, but I just don't think it really informs 
anymore. Which is, as I say, it's concerning, isn't it? Because that doesn't benefit anybody. It doesn't benefit the majority of people who, who, who are male and identify as men, who are female and identify as women. But it doesn't really benefit those sort of binary trans people who need something other than just biological sex to refer to. If we diminish these terms, man and woman, just down to proper nouns, or just down to a series of terms that we identify with, well, you, you like gentleman, you like that word, you like the word handsome. It's also amorphous, there's nothing there, is there? It's, we've got there. And, and it's like we've got to the cloud that I was talking about in a video the other day and we've got to the cloud and we're grappling for it and I mean, there's just nothing there there's just a bit of water vapor our hands just just clawing through what's there um there needs to be more than that i think i i think this almost like this discussion it needs the heat to come out of it a little bit more i try and always talk in a way that takes the heat out of it i think sort of globally on social media while other people keep spitting and snarling at one another and doing their best to try and silence people with the labels that they use and the claims that they make then it's not going to get anywhere because until you get past that point we can't start having a sensible discussion and start packing a few qualities back to these things it's really important mentioned in the other video that we don't start constraining man and woman down back into the traditional stereotypes we had before. But I do think we have to have something hanging on them, more than just man, somebody who identifies as a man, woman, somebody who identifies as a woman. Because if that's all they are, then to all intents and purposes, they're worthless. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.